Welcome to Watercolour Splashes. I'm Lorraine Brown and my artist life is all about watercolour. There is never just one way to paint. In Watercolour Splashes I will show you what works for me. Tips, techniques and experiments that you can try for yourself. Be inspired. Let's Watercolour Splash. Welcome to this Watercolour Splashes. Today I'm going to um, talk about painting in monochromatic for a portrait of this chap here. I'm not sure which country he's from. I've called him an Arab man. He possibly isn't an Arab man, but this is the one I'm going to be doing. I have done this before um, for another class, but today I'm going to be showing everybody how to paint this in a single color. Now it doesn't have to be gray. It can quite easily be um, sepia. So here I've got a, a one that I've done in um, Payne's Grey, and here's exactly the same one here, done in sepia. Single pigment colour, so that this particular um, lesson would really all be about observation. If you can paint this chap in a single colour, observing where there's lights and darks and getting the features, then when it comes to painting it in colour, it will be so much easier. There's several ways of getting a drawing of a portrait onto your watercolour paper. If you are a smart, um, accurate drawer, you could do it freehand. If you're not, you can find a way of doing it by either using a grid method, where you might take an image uh, to enlarge it, um, to put it on your watercolour paper, or you could perhaps take the image, have it printed out in A3, and trace it onto your watercolour paper, either with graphite trace down paper or perhaps pop it onto a light filled window and tracing it that way or if you have a light box doing it that way. So having it drawn on my uh, paper ready I am going to paint this only in one colour and my choices are either in Payne's grey, uh, sepia or maybe even indigo. It's going to depend what you've got at hand but uh, I've done it in Payne's grey, I've done it in sepia um, today I think I'm going to stick with the Payne's Grey. So I always test my colours first, but obviously being just a single pigment colour, it's not going to make a great deal of difference. But I want to make sure um, of what I'm going to get with my water ratio. So here I am sitting with it probably uh, the middle tones. So this is going to be like milk. If I want to put it down really light, I'm going to obviously add a bit more water to my pigment. And here's my really light tones. And if I need to go in then with my darks at the end, where it's really, really dark, here it is in what we call cream. To start the painting, you have a couple of choices. You can start on dry paper, or you can choose to wet the paper first and then drop the pigment in. I'm actually going to start with uh, wetting the paper first because I'm going to wet the background, add some colour, and then really I've sort of got half my painting done because I've covered all of this white paper that uh, is going to uh, be dark anyway in one quick wash. So I'm going to use a mop brush so I can get this done reasonably quickly. So I will wet all around my lightly drawn face with clean water, like so. And then when I drop my pigment in, it'll do a little bit of swimming around. It doesn't have to be a solid color. Just because the reference image we're using is a solid color, doesn't mean to say that you have to paint your background in a solid color. We are only using one pigment, so you know, there's not a lot of variation you can do here, but you can get it darker in some places and lighter in others. There, I've wet that entire area now, and I'm going to uh, just quickly get my pigment. So with my Payne's Grey, I will get a milky consistency of it here, so that I can add it to where I've put the water. Now, 
If I want it to be darker, I obviously could make that uh, more pigment. If I want it lighter, I obviously will add more water, but don't forget it's going to dry lighter anyway and I have already put some water on here, so it's gonna dry um, lighter again. But I'm gonna look and put it where, dark around where I can see on the reference, um, for instance, his um, headdress here. If it was nice and dark around there, it's going to help the headdress, headscarf stand out. So I'll do this and just drop it in like so. Let it mix with the water that's already on the page. That's that side done. Might drop it in even a little bit stronger just here. Whilst uh, there's still moisture on the paper, it's going to carry on moving around. There we go. Let's move over to the other side. If it started to dry on you, don't forget you can re-wet it before you start putting this paint down. So over onto the other side. Looking at my reference again, I think I will continue trying to keep it uh, dark where his headscarf is because that's very, very light there and that will help that really stand out. When it comes up to the top of his um, headdress or scarf, there's some knitting, uh, braiding type thing on the top. You could paint that at the same time that you're doing this. Um, or you could do it with a finer brush after. So carefully going around the ear. As I say, there's not much you can do with this one um, pigment here. I can't really do too much um, fancy patterning. So I'm going to just go with a simple color wash. But there we are. Now I've actually got, uh, well, half my painting done. That's good, right. Let's let that dry a tiny bit. The background is not perfectly dry, but it's dry enough that I can carry on and not uh, drag my arm through it as I'm painting. My next step is to get some skin color on this chap's face. I'm going to leave the headscarf. There's not a lot of painting to be done on that, but we need to get a first wash on the face. Now again, if you wet the face area, it will mean that when you add your first wash of pigment over there, you can't possibly really go too dark. And to start off with, unless you're really, really confident with what you're doing and you think you can go in with just the right value um, of paint in there, the safest way is to um, wet it first to drop it in. So all you're going to do is wet everywhere other than where you really think you'd like to leave it light. For instance, try and keep it very pale where you've got to be able to put the whiskers in for his beard or down here for his hair. Little highlights like this, I'm going to show you what to do with them as we paint. So if I paint over his face, and I'm going to paint over his eyes as well because even the white of his eyes there are not pure white. They will still have some um, paint in them. So here I've gone all over the face gone down over the beard area as well, but I'm going to be mindful when I add my painting down there not to make it too heavy. And I'm using dirty water here by the looks of it. It's almost toning what I need anyway. So come down here for the neck. His um, uh, shoulder um, strap here could be done after, but it's darker than what we're going to paint. So it can just go down now. So here I've got water all over the face. I'm going to have a tissue ready so that if it gets too heavy anywhere and I want to do a little bit of lifting out, I can. So I've gone up a tiny bit up there into his headscarf. Let's just do that. Now I might get a slightly smaller brush here um, to drop some of this paint in. 
and we'll just see how we go here. I might even tilt it just a fraction. I'll just pop behind my masking tape there just to give me a little tiny angle to paint out. I can see my photo. Um, just make sure that you can see, see it too. And here we go. So everywhere that I want to have a skin color and um, leave out some of the lights for the um, highlights. So when I get near the hair, I just won't go too colorful there. This is going to dry obviously lighter than what I'm seeing here because it dries 25% lighter. Then it's going to dry even lighter because I put water down first. So I'm diluting it considerably um, by the addition of all this water. Let's see here. We can certainly get a bit more here in the eye area because it's gonna be really dark anyway. A bit under here, a bit on his nose. Um, I'm down here, it's a little bit here for the beard. I'll try and be a little bit careful there, but he wants some skin color throughout it. Keep it a little bit light up here where I want to give him some light color uh, hair here. Um, so let's do the ear. Even though the ear's got a highlight on it, you don't want to have it exactly white because if you have a look here, even though that's really light, it's not as light as the headdress. So it's still going to want one thin wash of color down through the neck, down to the bottom, all of this, all of that, all throughout here. There we are, one layer of paint. Now, I'm going to quickly look at it whilst it's still wet and just see if I need to be really mindful of anywhere I'd like to get um, some highlights. It's easier to take it out now whilst it's wet than do it later. So when I have a look here, Maybe I'll just lift a tiny bit there where the eye is, just so I've got a little bit there. And the same in this other one. Um, he's got a bit of a highlight up here on his nose and a bit across the bridge of his nose. Maybe a tiny bit. Now, depending how you put your paint down, you may not have to do this. If you've uh, put it down lighter than I've got mine, you won't be looking for a lifting out to the same degree. If you don't lift out, it means trying to do something with it when it's dry, which can be a little bit harder. Let's just have a little bit out where his moustache is going to be. Here's his little goatee bit underneath. A little bit of dabbing here, so there'll be a little bit of white amongst the, uh, amongst the beard color. Now, have I got the highlight up here? I think that's okay. I think that's okay. That's probably all right. If this is very, very wet, where you're just dabbing with your tissue here really carefully, it could go back, the paint could go back in. But I can see from mine that it's going to be all right. So I think I've lifted everything out. So now I'm gonna take a couple of minutes for this to dry. I'll just do a tiny bit on the ear here. If I don't let this dry, uh, when I go to put in my next um, um, layer of paint, it's just going to run everywhere, so it's got to be dry. So there we are, light, 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 light. Enough for the beard. This will be all right down here. Yeah, that'll be okay, that'll be okay. So yeah, happy enough, we're going to let that dry. My first wash on the skin of the chap's face is now dry. I've taken the hair dryer to it. Um, so the job now is to actually just look closely at your reference image and where it's dark, you're going to add uh, the paint. Uh, you're going to try and keep the highlights that we've got by going around them. And really, you're just going to keep moving, moving around the face as a whole, painting some of it. 
um, concentrating on the eyes, then move around. You might have to go back to the eyes if it's not sufficient. And we're going to use a slightly stronger uh, pigment mixture, exactly the same colour paints grey, but it'll have less water in it so that we can get these darker areas on here. Then my final thing would be to paint the beard, put a few shadows in for the headdress and uh, that would be it. So I'll, I'll show you how I'm going to go about doing that and then I may even put something on um, um, a time speed to speed it up so you don't have to watch every single brush stroke. But let's see how we go. This time we are going to be painting on dry paper. That way when you put these dark areas in, they're going to stay because there's no water to carry it around. So you can go to smaller brushes for doing this. I've got an eight, a four, and there's a two there. I might use the two in the eye um, to get these marks in. And I'm going to show you how to soften them as we go. So let's make a start on that. I think I'll start with an eye and I'll get this really small brush for this. And it's already had a tone of color on here. So um, where I said you don't want it to be perfectly white, well, it's not really because look, there is white. That is actually one tone down because it's the lightest color of our gray that we've mixed up. But I'm just going to look closely at the eyes as I go here so I can try and get this um, as accurately as I can, hoping that this will look like this chap and he can join the others that I've already done. Um, I look a bit like a lineup, but uh, as long as he looks like him or at least a very close brother is what we would be aiming for. If you're doing a portrait and it's not uh, someone you know, uh, you haven't been asked to paint it, you're just doing it for the exercise and the fun of it, really doesn't matter. It's not uh, exactly them as long as you learn lots from what it is that you're doing. Um, but of course, if you've been asked to paint somebody you know, then it might need to look a bit more accurate. So I'm going to try and leave another little highlight underneath here, where I can see it there. These, of course, could be lifted out or added with a bit of gouache afterwards if you haven't got it done. But I'm just going to try and do it a little bit like that. That's probably got a little bit heavy there. Let's just see if we can lift that out a bit while it's wet. Now, most things are fixable. So um, don't spend too much time trying to get something perfectly right now because you're going to go back to it maybe two or three times. Um, so here's this. I've got a little space here. I'll come up. Leave a little highlight on the edge of his um, eyelid. Come around there with some darks. A bit out, slightly thicker paint, like so over to this side for a minute, darker up here, creamier paint. We say darker, if you go in with less water but more pigment, it's going to come out darker, like there. Little line across there, another one here. Come down into the iris part of the eye. Dark under here. Dark around there. A little bit here. And I might just soften this around just a wee bit. You don't have to make all of the decisions in one go, providing you keep softening lines. If you uh, haven't, can't see too much all in one go, then give yourself a little bit breaks by softening the areas so that if there's no hard lines, you can go back in later to darken something up or um, hard line something up, but if you leave yourself a soft line, then you can go back in and match it up without trying to match up too many hard areas. So, it's probably one of the darkest areas I'm going to be putting down is around these eyes. He 
He's squinting a lot. He's looking into the sun. And at the moment, it does look like two very, very dark eyes. Um, even when you look here, if you squint here, it almost looks like two black eyes. Uh, but that is really dark compared to this. But by the time we get more paint on here, they will look fine. And I still know that even though I didn't wet this first before I put this bit down, I still know I've got that 20, 25% shift in the color from wet to dry. So I'm just, I have got some drawing marks on here from when I've uh, uh, transferred the drawing to my watercolor paper. So I'm just gonna follow some of these lines and look at my reference at the same time put the paint down and keep moving around side to side, going back, seeing more as I go back the next time. Soften it, helps put the tone, uh, a slightly bigger brush it will help put the tone in here. Extra tone over under there. And this certainly needs it here. So I might need that little brush to put an extra line. I've forgotten underneath the eye there. So I will put this on a um, time thing in a moment after I've showed you a little bit of this. And you can watch me move all around the painting, gradually building up gradually building up the tone and you'll see that I'm going to flip from spot to spot to spot so they don't get bogged down in any one area. So still moving around down here. And if you use a small brush, a really small brush to get in a small area and then you forget to swap over to your bigger one, it does make the lines um, harder to shift afterwards. So it's better to actually move around with a bigger brush. These lines here we'll put down with a tiny brush and now look how quickly they dry. Because the tiny brush doesn't hold as much water, it's got hold of the pigment and they're in the page. They're in the page of good there now. So they might take a little bit of shifting around. So I'm going to put this onto a bit of faster painting, get the paint on the face. So you can see what I'm doing there. I might stop afterwards, talk to you about what's going on with the beard. Then we'll address the headdress and we're done. Okay, so hopefully you've been able to see that I keep moving around the face, adding colour, letting that little bit dry and, and, and moving around a little bit more. It's got to the stage now where actually I do have to take a little bit of time to let some of this dry because as I'm trying to put some of the darker elements in, they are just brushing, um, sorry, washing away. So I just need to maybe take the hairdryer to it so that I can um, um, carry on. And then um, I'll show you how to get some marks in here for the beard. Um, the ear is very important. And then we'll have a little look at the headdress. I'm going to just leave that for just a little minute um, to settle whilst I can um, just keep looking at it because sometimes you don't see things straight away. You, you, you've got to perhaps step back for a second. And I'll have a look at this ear. The ear is really important if you're painting a likeness of somebody because it's almost like fingerprints. Everybody's ears are different. And um, so this chap's got a very um, fleshy ear, inner part of the ear here. And when I've painted him a couple of times before, it is a part that I've struggled with. So I'm going to just see if I can do any better job this time. And um, so I'm just, so I've got one layer of paint on here with that initial wash. 
And I'm now just going to be putting in some darks and try to follow the values because that's really all we're painting really is lights, darks, values, but trying to get our washes down so that we've got soft areas, hard edges, soft edges, and at least three or four more or more changes in value where we need it. So I'll just keep painting around here like this. I don't like that hard line that's already come here, but if I come and wet that side of it as well, it may help. Sometimes using a small brush is really good because you feel like you're being accurate. But I, as I say, I think sometimes it puts the, the lines in too heavy and harder to shift um, because there's not a lot of water on the brush to take the paint around. So you've got to get in really, really quickly if you want to be able to soften those lines because um, they're going to dry very quickly on you. But let's keep moving around here because I just want to see if perhaps I can achieve a slightly better ear maybe than the three or four times I've already painted this chap. So I have done him a few times for different classes. Um, and as I say, we've painted him monochromatic. People have used different paint than Payne's Grey, sepia neutral tint and so forth um, but uh, this is a lead up actually to painting this chap in funky colours that is um, our goal in the class lesson and um, after you've painted something monochromatic like this and you've had to look carefully at values when you come then to paint it in colour you perhaps can be a little bit more free and easy because you've got the confidence that you've actually already made it look like this chap in your monochromatic one. At least that's the idea. And as I say, we're going after a likeness. It would look it would be really good if it could look like him or at least look like his brother. But we'll see how we go. So I'll carry on moving around this ear, probably paying uh, careful attention more because there's small areas that you're trying to look at here. I see little parts of dark um, paint I need to put in there, a, a lighter area underneath it. And it's all of these things that help the form of the ear take shape and give you the right ear for this chap. So here's the ear nearly done. So a bit of mid-tone up here. And I always reassess, as this is, will dry, I will look and see if somewhere I've put it too dark or I haven't, haven't got enough and it will require a bit more. But you don't have to make every single decision in one area. Just had to adjust the sun blind in my studio. A lot of sun just came in and I'm not quite sure till I go to edit this uh, video, whether it's affected what you can see. But hopefully this is still going to work. Don't think I could paint this again for about the eighth time. I've really got to get this one to work. So I was looking here and I could see a little area, probably because that dart's got to go under there will help the bottom of the ear. There's always one part on your painting when you start putting it down that really helps the bit next to it. It's like a jigsaw puzzle really. And uh, it's not until all of the pieces are in, see this dark shadow here? It's not until all these dark areas are in 
that it starts to make sense. Um, let's go in there a little bit more, a bit round there. It's not perfect, that is for sure. But, as I say, if you can look a bit like a chap, I'll be more than happy. I'm going to just bring that bit of extra colour down here and then I'm going to move away from the ear. Otherwise, I'm going to get fixated with it. Fixated, trying to make it look like that ear. And something will be as obvious as anything when I go back to it. Um, so let's just leave that alone for a minute and we'll move on. Deep um, creases that the chap has got in his face. They want to have a hard line. They help to find where his nose is, but they, on the same token, you've got to still be able to soften them. So I put the paint down, rinse off my brush, touch the line on the inside here where it's coming into under, under the crease, coming round here and on this one, touch it. And I can also touch this one on the other side to help plump out that part of his cheek here and probably do the same on that one. So we're plumping, that's what we're doing, plumping up the skin here. Part of his nose now. His nose can have more colour on it. Let's get a bit more colour on his nose. Trying still to keep the highlights that I had in there. I don't want to lose those. So I will try not to put the paint. where I carefully left them before. And there's one there that I'm just losing. So just with a bit of clean water, just scrub back up into that little area there, just to lift out a little bit of paint. Okay, need to move on a little bit here now. So I'm happy that I've got a bit more paint on his nose. By the time I give him some eyebrows, that would help. The hair here will help, the beard will help. So I could move to the lips. He hasn't got much going there with his lips, but he's got to have some lips. So it's really a little bit of a dark line here. And again, you really want to try and get this chap's mouth, not just anybody's. Um, lips. Put the dark line down between his top and his bottom lip. Smooch you around with a bit of water on the paint that you've put down will help give the top lip um, and probably leave a tiny tiny little gap so that it's a little bit hit and miss here for this bottom lip. It joins up in the middle and comes down a little bit here. So what I'm trying to do here is, is a little bit of a gap here, dark in the middle. Use the paint that's down to go up there. The paint above his well, the top of his lip here is what's going to help us give him his whiskers. So you could put the paint down like that. Now the whiskers. This is tricky. Less is more. You do not want to have to paint every single whisker here. The other thing is you could tackle this with using masking fluid and mask out all of uh, these little wide areas, but 
goodness, when you take that masking off, you've got a fairly big job to still make it look nice. I'm just putting in these nostrils because that will help define his nose here. You can hardly see the one on this side. It's just a tiny little bit there. But if I put this here, I can soften that away. There's a shadow still under here, so that's got to come down. This can come around here like this. So now I could soften the underneath part of that nostril. This one under here, soften. Soften that line around the side of his nose there. This is going to help me try and do these whiskers. Okay, here goes. Let's see, what are we going to do? So I feel like you need to put some paint down and probably a small brush for this will help you not end up with losing all of it because basically that first wash that we put down, we haven't got the white of the paper because here it is. We've actually got a light gray. Um, but by the time you put some darks into it, it will read like white whiskers, or at least that's the plan. So I tend to put some paint down, then I just start flicking, little flicky strokes. And sometimes the flicky strokes have got to go upwards from here. and down from the top. If you do them the way that they're growing, so basically we're negative painting here because we're trying to not paint the white whisker, we're trying to paint the skin that is between the whiskers. So you do not have to do every one of them. It would look a little bit overdone if you do, but you've got to put a few down so it looks like whiskers, and then we've still got to soften these. They don't look like little ants crawling all over his face. Again, using this tiny little brush, it's good for putting a little mark down, but much harder to soften it. So I'll, I think when I get to the beard underneath, I might just choose the bigger brush. I'm hoping you can see that that will start looking like whiskers. And we might have to reassess whether they're dark enough. So when we get to the underneath, he's got a little goatee bit here. So we really could do with a wee bit more paint, watery paint here on his bottom lip, which is going to help us use some of that paint in a downward stroke into this little part of his beard here. If it gets a wee bit heavy, you could just try dabbing a tiny bit with a tissue. It just might just take out a few bits. There we are. And then we're going to do the same sort of thing here. So to be able to do the uh, bottom part, um, so his beard area here, he's actually got to have darker paint on his neck and that is what we're going to be able to use to come back upwards into the beard. So if I say put some darker paint here that I'm going to use coming down here for his um, neck which is in shadow and it's also over on this side. It's part of his headscarf is under there as well. Dark here. I will darken up under here, this area here. And now I will use some of this paint to start 
flicking and I will try this bigger brush so that I don't get a bit bogged down with this. So just looking at the pattern I can see here, it's got a little scar here coming down or scar or crease. One under here, bit of a shadow color over here. And then I'm going to use just clear water into that paint that I put down. to negatively paint the dark in his beard. Now, I'm not going to be able to get every whisker and hair in the same spot as they are on his um, face in this photo, but it doesn't matter as long as it will read, um, as long as it will read a beard, that's all I'm after. And I think you just take your time because you know, you don't, you don't, you don't want to go too dark. You don't want to have to then get out some gouache or something to start flicking it in to, to get what you want because Nothing looks the same as the white of the paper. So if you can retain the white of the paper, it is far better to do so. Now, if I put this nice dark um, line he's got in his face over here, this one, and if I strengthen up that one a little, and strengthen that one so you have to keep moving around because you if you if you think it's not dark enough you put some more on it will get too wide because the water is going to keep spreading it out so it's better to put it down soften it and then as it dries if it's too uh, light afterwards you're going to go in and just put some more on when it's dry He's got scars all over his face, this chap, but this is what's going to help him have his craggy, his craggy look, especially as we're doing it in one colour. We've got to just put these marks in to try and get our likeness. So I'll back up this eye area here. Because as I say, I don't see everything. I don't see everything as I'm painting. I see it as I'm moving around. So, you put it down. Again, that little brush, which I don't know why I keep picking it up because it's too harsh. She has a few dots over on his face over there, there. Now I've got to do this hair up into here, which I'm going to do in the same manner, the same manner that I did the beard down here. And I may well have to still do a little bit more here, but I can't see it all straight away. So I'm going to tie this little bit up here and I'm going to add some paint where I can see it's definitely dark and up under here then I'm going to use that paint to help me bring down negative shapes so leave the first wash for the white hair and I'm hopefully painting in between. This is the plan. Right, flip a bit of that around. Maybe a little 
little bit darker up in here. And I can see that looks like white hair there now. Eyebrows and headscarf would be our next thing. And then we'll reassess and see where we've got about anything extra. Uh, so it's got to be a bit darker here too. Maybe I'll just leave that to dry a minute. I'll, I'll go up here. Let's have a look and see what we can do with these eyebrows. Now, because we're not using masking fluid, we obviously can't get these lovely white um, eyebrows, but we can get the dark bits in between. So I will use a small brush for this. And as I say, I may not get his eyebrow eyebrows exactly the same number of darks versus light, but I will just put the darks in and leave the paper underneath to be the one. Come over to this side. I'll go back and have a look at that in a minute. So a few darky bits up in here, up into here. Flicking around, flicking around the paint that's there with a bit of clean water to show some light hairs for his eyebrows. Knowing I can't do much about the white ones. I would rather indicate these than have used masking fluid anyway. Um, A bit darker there. So judging values has to be done more, more, more. It can't be done all in one go because when you have so much unpainted paper around you as you paint, you can't judge whether you've actually made it dark enough or not. But the more you do and the more you move around, you realise that um, it can have more because you've covered up another piece of white paper which has now thrown the one that you thought was dark to not being dark enough. So we just keep moving. So I'm just going to finish working on this. I'll finish the face here and then I'll show you a quick bit of modelling on the um, headdress and we're going to call this one done. Well, I've been working on this for a little while. I can see, you know, quite a few little areas I could have done a bit better. My observation could have been a, bit, a little bit better. But painting whilst you're filming is sometimes a bit tricky because, um, you know, you're trying to talk, paint and think all at the same time. I'm quite happy with how he's looking and I could do more here on his beard but I think I won't because I think I could end up losing it a little bit. The ear is not too bad. Um, I might leave that for a little bit. I've lost a little bit of his white hair up in here. Now I could go in with gouache as I say and um, use that but I'm really trying to avoid having any gouache on here. So what I'm doing is I'm adding some clear water here and doing, this is a synthetic brush that I've got here, so not my good sable. And I'm just, you can hear it, I'm just really scrubbing it a little. I'm going to then just very, very carefully blot that. Um, and then all I need to do when that's dry is to add in a few dark strokes into it, but I've lift, managed to lift back out a little bit of his hair that's gone up there. 
So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to actually move on to the headscarf. I may just darken up a couple of other areas and I'm going to call that done. So when it comes to doing the um, headdress, there's little bits of knitting or nice weaving and whatever up here. You can do whatever pattern you like for that. The, the focus is not up there, but of course it does help set off the white um, headdress. So paint whatever sort of knitting or crocheting or whatever sort of pattern it is that you'd like for here. So I'm going to put down some dark paint, put the dark paint down um, like so, and then maybe just push it around with my brush a little bit, make it look like little bits of knitting. Some dry brush stroke has gone down there, which is really quite useful. Um, because that can look like little stitches of something. But as long as there's a little bit of pattern here, just to show that that's a little bit of knitting up there. just about there I feel like I have captured a likeness of this chap he may not think so but I don't think he's ever going to see my painting so that's probably a good thing I may have mine lighter here than what I can see on here my scarf could be lighter than what's on here but as long as it's in relative terms to what I've painted here then the features will still be fine. If I go darker here, I have to make the overall thing darker. This will take quite a bit of tweaking to do and I don't think I'm going to do it. But what I have just saved to show you at the end is how I may just finish off this little headdress part here. Because if you look closely, if you're getting this um, um, photo yourself to have a go at trying to do this Arab man, you'll see that this is like a little fringe on the end of the scarf, the headdress. So it's really exactly the same technique that we used for the um, beard. We're going to back paint the fringe by using paint that we've put down for the scarf itself. We put in a couple of little shadowy parts like this, and this really is a little bit darker here. Uh, and a bit down there. Hope you can see what I'm doing here. And a little bit on the bottom here. And then there's another fringe part down there. These are only subtle little things. They probably don't make a great deal of difference to the overall painting, but it will give you an idea how negative, negatively painting the darks 
will make it look like you've painted the whites, but in actual fact, you've only painted the shadows or the spaces really in between the white. Quite that dark and backstroke the paint up into that. So you get a little fringe. Um, anywhere else, there's probably tweaking here I could do, but as I say, you could be going around on this for quite a long time. So from, from, from a demo to, to enable you to have an idea how to go about painting something like this yourself, I think I probably met my brief. I might, if this was going to be, say, a painting that I wanted to do something with, I obviously would tweak it a little bit more. I might do a little bit more with the eyes. I might even put a little highlight in there with some white gouache. But where I've lost a bit of his ear over here, I'd like to regain some of that. So what I will do is try to add a bit more background and go around the ear Rinse my brush off and gets more water on it. Soften that line that I've gone around the ear. And all of a sudden, I've got a slightly better shape on my ear, showing a bit of a highlight. So I'll just wash that away a little bit there. And now my ear, I think, is looking better. Don't want it to look totally um, outlined. So if it's starting to look like that, go back to your line, add a bit more paint, back it into it, and bring it out wider. There, I think that's it. And I think I'll just do the same over here. just to get this to look a little balanced or a bit more dynamic for the white headdress. And with the background, if this had been a, a portrait that perhaps had got color in it and I felt like this was um, too plain here, I could just um, flick a bit of my paint's grey up in here. Try not to go over my headdress. If I do, quickly dot it off. Right, I think I might call that done. So, I hope you have a go at this. It's really an exercise in observation because you're not making any color choices all you are making are the choices of where you put it darker, where you put it lighter. Can you leave out areas and negatively paint in them to make it look like um, uh, whiskers or hair? And, uh, you know, as I say, you do as much or as little of this as you think you need to, to be happy and you can see it as being what you want. I'm gonna stop this now. Otherwise, I could be going for a while. So, thank you for watching another little demo that I've done uh, for my watercolour splashes series. Uh, I hope you give this one a try. The links are in the description to get the reference photo, if you'd like, from Pixabay. I'll put in uh, a couple of other bits of information in that description as well. Hope to see you uh, watching another video that I will be doing soon. And if you want to be notified, of course, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, thank you. Bye.